I'm going to go through how to use this Vernier video analysis app. Once you go to the link and arrive at this website, it's going to default to this um, image right here. You can import your own video, and we'll talk more about that at another time. But for now, I want everyone to uh, try out the fan cart video. So when you click that, it's going to open up to this screen. The first thing I want you to do is go up to this um, icon up here, this table icon, and I want the data table hidden for now. Okay, so right now we have the graph and the video. So if I click that, it's no video. So those are the two things that we want available. All right, go back to this icon, click that. So if you were to play the video, you can see here's the fan cart. If you play it, it just shows the fan cart just rolling down uh, this ramp, okay? Go back, bring it all the way here. Um, if we grab this uh, cursor and kind of just go forward with it until right when it looks like it moves, like it kind of looks like right there is where it moves. That's a good starting point. Um, do that, and then the next thing you, you want to set up in all these video analysis, you'll see that there is usually a meter stick or something uh, that represents a standard or known distance. So you're going to go over here to the system, and it's going to give you this uh, tool to kind of line up on whatever you're using to set the standard for the measurement. So I'm going to grab this, and I'm going to line up the end of it with the end of the meter stick right about there, all right, and take the other end and do the same thing, okay? Now what that does, if you look up here, it's letting the, uh, the software know that 910 pixels is equal to one meter, okay? This is how it's going to analyze uh, what's happening with respect to the objects that are moving in the in the frames of the video. All right, the next thing you want to do, that was setting up the scale, you want to set up where the origin is going to be. Now, I want to measure the fan cart, how it's moving, and it has this uh, green square on it right there. So that's a good point on this object that I can kind of use to measure as it's moving. So whatever object you're kind of like um, trying to measure or do analysis for, you want to find some consistent point on it to always go back to. Uh, if it was a person running, you might want to go towards where their center of gravity is, which would be near their hips. Uh, you wouldn't want to let pick an arm or a hand because while they're running, the hand's moving forward, up, back, down, all that kind of stuff. So in this situation, this object, uh, the center of gravity right there, it's always just going to move across. So that's a good uh, place to pick for your origin, all right? So just going to take the origin, the XY origin. We're going to move it right to the middle of that box. Now, if this object were going up an incline, I could change uh, the x-axis orientation. Um, you can do that. Well, you can rotate that, but we don't need to for this. Okay, next. We want to check the frame rates and how many times we want to advance our frames. This video already had uh, the frames per second as 29.97. If you're using your phone and you video something um, in slow motion or super slow or what you know whatever regular rate, uh, you may need to find that out uh, when you import um, your video. Usually. I think it's usually around 30 frames per second. Sometimes it's 60, but usually phones are 30. Um, but just, you know, you can do a quick search to find that out. Now, as far as advancing frames, this is how we're going to, you know, collect d data in this video. So I want to know, like, how many frames do I want to advance uh, to for each time I collect a data point? So <clears throat> I'm going to choose five, okay? And what that means is, Every time um, I select a data point, it's going to advance five more frames for me to collect the next one. All right. 
and I'll kind of show you what that means. So if you go up here, this cursor up here where it says add, we want to track this object, okay? So we want this cursor, the one that kind of moves around, not this one that you can scale up and down uh, the size of the, the diameter. We want this other one that we can kind of place and move <clears throat> to track the object. So I'm going to go right to the front of this square. And when I'm ready, I'm just going to click it once. You see that <clears throat> it, it put a dot there, a blue dot, and the object advanced five frames. So I'm going to move it to the front of the object again, the square, and click it. It moved. If you look over here, it's starting to collect data points. All right, let's do it again. I'm just going to keep doing this. Go to the front. Until I get all the way to the end of the meter where this thing traveled to. And you can see every time I do it, it's generating the graph for me. Sometimes I might go a little too forward. I could fix that later. Try to be consistent. So you, you can tell the thing's moving faster because there's more space in between my uh, data points, which are advancing five frames every time. And let's do one more. Okay. So I've collected the data points. I start over here and you can see it didn't, it wasn't moving fast. So the points were kind of on top of each other. And then it started, you know, gaining speed. And so there was space between the data points. Now let's click on the graph over here. Right, you can see some things for analysis. You can add a tangent line, interpolate, uh, graph legend. Click on this um, label screen where you see like a red for X uh, and Y and blue for Y. Click on that. And what I want is I just want to look at how the X changed, right? It's X position, right? So I'm going to uh, click on the Y to turn it off, OK? Now, this makes sense, right? If here's the, the starting point 0, and up here is 1 meter away, we can see that it, it is changing its position as time goes by, OK? So this graph is a good example uh, of collecting position versus time, right? So for now, this is what I want everyone to be able to do when you open up this video analysis. Uh, you should be able to um, do all the different steps, get a graph that looks like this. And then when you're ready, you can go up here and you can save it um, as a whatever file, give it a name, give it your name, and then uh, that's what you'll be able to submit um, as a grade. OK, or when you do a lab for whatever analysis, when we start doing different projects. OK.